what do you think a Trump presidency means for Silicon Valley? And how are you guys talking about this internally? So if there's anything we know about Donald Trump is that there's a lot of uncertainty that follows him. And there's been a lot of discussion around this meeting tomorrow that's going to take place with various technology leaders. My view is that these people are extremely accomplished, very smart, very successful people. I hold an extraordinary high regard. And we need to surround the presidency and the cabinet with more folks who are smart and innovative thinkers. What do you hope they convey? I hope that they're able to find some common ground around innovation. I, I, I don't know that there's going to be specific topics that they get to the bottom of in an hour-long meeting, but I hope that they open up a dialogue between the president and Silicon Valley. Now, how are you digesting this at Spark? What are you telling your portfolio companies? There's, you know, a lot of uncertainty. I mean, the markets have reacted positively in right. some ways, but not others. There's a lot of wait and see. Yeah, I mean, as a partnership, we're a collection of individuals with our own viewpoints. So we've all been internalizing this very personally. <laughs> but in terms of what we advise our portfolio companies, it's really to keep on keeping on, to keep with the basics, build great companies, focus on hiring amazing people, focus on building great products and businesses, and really focus on your business. Now, you used to work at Kleiner Perkins. You focused on earlier stage. Right. Now you're with the growth fund. And right. I'm curious, what is the difference when you're looking at growth stage companies versus early stage companies? And how has your own strategy shifted? Right, we really talk about inflection investing at Spark on our growth fund. What we're looking for is companies that have already found product market fit and just need to pour gasoline on the fire to really become very, very big iconic companies. So we're looking for metrics that um, we can point to without having to squint too hard that indicate that inflection point has taken place. And it can be revenue, but it can also be users or engagement of users. Do you think there'll be more competition at the growth stage now that the belt seems to be tightening at the earlier stage and you know it seems like a fewer number of companies are getting a larger pool of capital? I mean, there's certainly a tremendous amount of capital available and no surprise, everyone's capital is green, but we think that there is a dearth of really wonderful investors who can add value to portfolio companies at that growth stage. Bill Maris was just on and said he thinks we're in a huge bubble, we're at peak VC. You know, it's going to get bad for a lot of people. What's your reaction to that? We think if you're building an incredible company, that there's going to be plenty of capital for you, but the choice is really going to be around finding a partner that's good for your business, mm -hmm. not just blank checks wherever you can get them. So you guys announced an investment today in a company called Pendo, $20 million. Spark is traditionally a consumer-focused firm, and this is an enterprise software startup. What do we make of that decision? Absolutely, yes. So Spark has a long history investing in iconic consumer companies like Twitter and Oculus and Tumblr. Um, but there's this trend that we are extremely excited about, and, and that is typically called the consumerization of the enterprise, but more simply put is really, we expect as individuals for the products and services that we use at work to look and feel like the products and services we use at home. And yeah. that doesn't matter if we're behind a desk or if our office is behind a bar, we really want engaging products in the workforce. So what Pendo offers is a fully integrated platform for enterprise companies to build better products for their end consumers. So what I find interesting about this company is they're based in Raleigh, North Carolina, of all places. Talk about getting outside the vortex. Um, it, are you looking beyond Silicon Valley more often now to find those like diamonds in the rough? We are always happy to get on a plane. I have the personal view that building a company outside perhaps of the, the Bay Area bubble is actually a competitive advantage. They sit at the intersection of three very famous, very well-known universities and have incredible access to talent at much cheaper cost. So we consider that a positive when it comes to investing in a, a place like Raleigh. So where are you looking in, in 2017? Where do you see yourself placing your bets? Uh, given the uncertainty and, and the climate right now? We are definitely going to ride out this macro shift towards more consumer feeling products at, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. We've already invested in Slack, we invested in Trello, we invested in Mark 43 and now Pendo, but we think there's tremendous opportunity to bring really compelling, engaging, delightful products to the workplace. In addition, you know, and we tend to be founder driven by trend, um, we are excited about applied AI. Uh, historically, AI, machine learning development has been relegated to R&D departments. We're actually starting to see it integrated into products and services that consumers use. An example might be credit and risk scoring, where it's previously static heuristics, and now with vast amounts of data, these algorithms can learn over time. Um, and we're also excited personally about VR and AR in the enterprise. My contrarian view is that we might actually see more adoption in the enterprise for these services than in consumer life, perhaps outside of 
really hardcore gaming, it might actually follow the path of a PC. Interesting. Now, uh, you're Spark's first female partner, and I know you're very <laughs> passionate about this issue of diversity in Silicon Valley, in VC, and I'm curious, what do you think it's going to take uh, to see actual change? Where do you think the challenges still lie? So my view is that you can't be what you can't see. And that the reason that I am a general partner at a venture firm today, a very well-regarded one, is because I had a woman general partner on my board in my previous role as head of products at Square, and that was Mary Meeker. Mm -hmm. And she stood up as someone who I could be like, mm -hmm. and I think we need to have more women in senior positions so that the next generations understand that there are more opportunities for them in their career paths. All right, Megan Quinn, general partner, Spark Capital, thank you so much Thanks for, for joining me. us today. Great to have you. One disclosure I do want to note, Megan is a board member at the company Handshake, where my husband currently works.